Good morning, saints. My name is Reverend Eric Daniel Lamore. I'm coming to you today from Greater Acquaintance Missionary Baptist Church, where I serve under Pastor Kevin Wilkes. Um, I thank you so much for joining us this morning for today's message. Um, but before we get started, Father, I just want to give the God all the praise and all the glory as we go into prayer. If you just join me now. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today just to say thank you, Father God. We come to you, Father God, to thank you for just giving us breath in our bodies today, Father God, for the roof of our head, Father God, for the clothes on our back, Father God, for the food on our table. We thank you for a new day of mercy, Father God, a new day of grace, Father God. We thank you for covering us from one week to the next, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all the things that you provided for us, Father God. But right now, Father God, it's preaching time. And I ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, that you remove Eric Daniel Lamore completely away from this place, Heavenly Father, and let your Holy Spirit be my comfort and my God guide and be the words of you, Heavenly Father, not of the flesh, Father. So right now, Father God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart is unacceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' matchless name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. So this morning's scripture will be coming from the book of Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 7, and also verses 17 through 22. That's the book of Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 7, and 17 through 22. And uh, as they say in church, when we all have it, say amen, amen. All righty. And the word reads thusly. <clears throat> it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other besides them Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the side Syria, Syria. And behold, they be in Hazan, Hazazan, Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout of all Ju Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before a new court and said, O Lord, God, our Father, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of the land before the people of Israel, and gavest to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? That's 1 through 7. Now we'll be reading from 17 through 22. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face and to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekiah. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood, said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in your Lord, and believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established, believe his prophets, so ye shall pass so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. 
And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the edification of our souls. This morning's topic, we'd like to address it. Praise. Now watch God. Praise. Now watch God. Praise. Now watch God. Hallelujah. So in this text here, we have old Jehoshaphat. Just a little bit of history on exactly the individual, the king at this time that we're dealing with. Jehoshaphat was a son of Asa and was the fourth king out of, of the kingdom of Judah. He became a king at the age of 35 years old and he resigned. He reigned as king for 25 years. Um, he was said to be a very strong king, but in this text here, we also find that he was a praying king. But now Jehoshaphat has is about to be in what's called to be the battle of his life. You know, as most of us also are battling with something that's bigger than us. We're battling with things that we feel we don't have control over. We're battling things that seems like they don't have an end. We're battling with things that's just ongoing. We're battling with doctor's appointments. We're battling with financial situations. We bear, bear burdens with, with, with financial, family, friends, all these things we carry as burdens. But I'm here to tell you today that God is in control. We have to praise and then watch God. See, today we'll be talking about Jehoshaphat handling his situation when all the odds were against him, when, when everything looked as if he was defeated, when it seemed that there was no other way, when he was in trouble. Now, here, as we go forward in the word, in verse three, it states that and Jehoshaphat feared. See, the people that came and told him, like those people do, they come and they let you know all these things that's going on around you and how people talking about you and how people feel about you and uh, what's going on here and what's going on there. And we come times to, we have a sense of fear that comes upon us when we see things that are bigger than us and we think it's too big for the situation that we're in at the time. See, what I like about Jehoshaphat and the way that this was worded here is it says that Jehoshaphat feared. See, feared, he said that, and it's meant here in a past tense. So before the devil could get into his spirit with fear, because that's exactly where the devil would like to touch base with you at, as long as he has fear, Fear in you, which is one of our five senses, something that he could we could touch, taste, feel, smell, and I speak on it a lot. He had put fear there, but I'm going to tell you something. This is what we need to do whenever we have that sense of fear that comes upon us, whenever we have a trial, a tribulation, or an obstacle that's in front of us. When we fear, we have to do exactly what Jehoshaphat did immediately because there was no room for error in there. If you read the word, the word says that, and Jehoshaphat feared and before it can set in, the fear can set in, and before he can start to tremble, before the feeling can set good in his stomach, before his mind can start to think crazy things about how he can't do it, how things won't work out, how the odds are stacked against him, he went and took himself to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. See, when we have that fear that sets in, and when we have those obstacles that set in in our lives, we have to stop. Before fear sets and seek the Lord. Because when you stop and you seek the Lord, immediately what you do is you activate peace. Because now he's going to give you the ability to go through whatever situation it may be through his grace 
and his mercy. Believe me, if you were in that situation, God knew it before you were born, when you were in the womb, when you were still stitched in the womb, he knew that the day that you were having this tribulation would come and he's already given you provision to overcome it. But we have to, as believers, know what it is that we have to do. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today, what Jehoshaphat did in this time of trouble. In verse six, it says, and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. See, what Jehoshaphat did in this situation here, what we need to do sometimes, is we got to start realizing exactly who God is in our situations, in our troubles. We have to know who God is. But see, the it sounded here as Jehoshaphat was asking a question. Of course, he was not asking the question. What he was doing was reminding himself on who God really is. See, sometimes we have to speak it in into existence. We have to speak right back out exactly what God has done, exactly who God is. See, let me tell you something about who God is. Colossians 1 and 16 says, for in him, all things are created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. We at we whatever whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him, and all things have been created for him. That's the God that we serve. We serve the God that's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. We serve a God that's in complete control of all things. See, we have to know who and how big the God is that we serve. See, Jehoshaphat gave God the glory and took comfort in knowing that God was in control. See, we have to take comfort of knowing who exactly God is. See, it don't matter how long you've been in this situation, how long you've been in this fight. It doesn't matter. We just have to know that God is in control. No matter how big the fight looks, no matter how small the fight looks, we have to know that God is in control. See, he knew God was in control. And it says in verse 7, this is how we know that he knew that God was in control. Because are not thou our God who did this drive out the inhabitants this land before thy people and gave us it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. See, he knew that he was in a fight. Now he's had to come to re relationship in remembrance to himself. So now what we have to do is recognize what God has already done. See, the thing about the God that we serve, he's an unchangeable God. He does not change. So the same thing that happened in that last situation, and he got you through it, I bet you rest assured if you trust him with the patience that he's blessed you with, every man has been given a measure of faith. We have to utilize and activate that faith system that we have to know that God is on, in control, and now we have to think of what God has already done in our lives. Again, he is not asking a question because he already knows the answer. He knows that God has already accomplished great things for his children he knows that god gave inheritance to the land of to the land of israel to abraham his seed that to all of his seed to all of his seed so when he says all of his seeds he knows that he's included because he is the seed of abraham we are the seed of abraham we have to know these things we have to know that god is in control we have to know that he's already accomplished these things in his life. See, he knows that Moses and the children went through on dry land and the Red Sea was departed. He knows these things. He knows what happened in Joshua. He knows that what he did for Joshua. In Joshua, the 21st chapter, verses 43 and 44 states, And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. And God gave them rest round about according to all that swear unto their fathers and there stood a man of all their enemies before them and the lord delivered all their enemies into their into their hand he knows these things he knows that he brought him through he knows he brought moses through he knows he's brought joshua through he knows these things these are the things we have to know he knew these things just because of the very ground that he was standing on. The ground that he was standing on was the land that was promised to him. He knew just by the going down and picking up a little bit of dirt that the promise had already been fulfilled because he knew he had already previously done it. 
for the past. So what makes it any different from him? Because he said he gave his inhabitants to all. And he said they walk round and about in peace. So therefore, this is only a trial and tribulation in the land that you're living in, in the temporary spot that you may be in at this time, because God is in control of this situation. God is the one that had you in that situation. God was the one that allowed Satan. He allowed Satan to put a hand upon you and get you into that situation. But God is looking for you to trust him to get you out. Amen. Whew. So he knew just from the land he was standing on that he was standing on a physical promise of God. See, sometimes we got to we got to go back in ourselves and we got to remember all the things that God has already done in our lives. I'm talking about the prayer times that you had in the jail cell when God brought you up out of it to be here today watching me right here on Facebook. I'm talking about praying for the healing that you knew that happened over your body, happened over your children, happened over your family. I'm talking about praying that he fixed your marriage. I'm talking about when you had a past situation in your marriage. You have to go back and reflect on what God has done in your life. You have to go back and see where it is that God has brought you from. And then once you go back and see exactly where God has brought you from, go back and did exactly what Joseph had, Jehoshaphat has done. Go right back into that same place that you were in. That same land that he was standing on was the promised land that he had pro got promised to the seed of Abraham. The same land. He was there, but it was just with a little bit of trouble. See, the trouble that he was in at that particular time was a temporary fix. And the trouble that you in right now here today, whatever it may be, and we all got some trouble in our lives. Whatever it may be, it is a temporary fix, but it's all about how you go for it. It's all about how you look at it. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. Because we can't see the things like other people see them. Because see, those people that came and was telling them about the people that was coming after them, the the all, whoever they may have been, I told him what was going on, that they coming to get you. Let me tell you something. Those are the individuals right there. That it tries, we call in our world, put the cables on you, which means get you excited. They try to get you excited and set some type of mindset into your mind, almost making you think that you've been defeated. But let me tell you something. Like I said, you have to take a look back. You have to take a look back exactly where he's brought you from. I don't know about you, but I could tell you about a little bit about me. I know from the house that I'm sitting in right now where God has brought me from. I know from the job that I work right now where God has brought me from. I know right now from the healing over my daughter what God has brought me from. See, I know right now just about how the, 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 the saved in my family that came and trusted God just to type of God that I serve. He's unchangeable. He will not change on you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. See, the problem you have now is no different from the problem you had then. God is still in control. Whew. Just to know the peace that comes from knowing that God has a hand on your life. Each and every morning that you wake up, you ought to give God all the praise and all the glory. Because I'm going to tell you what the praise and the glory will do for you. See, because right here in verses 21, as we're going to go further, 21 and 22, it states, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise in be the beauty of holiness as they went before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. See, what happened is right now, they got into a mindset. Because I'm going to tell you something, when you come to God in prayer, when you know who God is and when you know what God has done, it will give you a sense of peace of knowing what God is about to do. See, they had a sense of peace. And some might sit here and wonder right now and say this. They might say, how is it that you can be praising and glorifying God and your rent ain't paid? How could you be singing and praising God and you sit in a sick bed? How could you sing and praise God when your car just went down? How could you sing and praise God when you have to get a new roof put on your home? How could you seize and praise God when you just got fired from your job? How is it that you can praise God in these situations because you know who you're praising? You know who God is. You're not just setting yourself up for no for, for no false promises that a man has given unto you. You setting yourself up for a promise that the 
word of God has given to you. God speaking directly to you. The love letter that's been written for all of us. He gave you promises in these love letters. That's why they sing and sit in here singing. He appointed them to sing. He didn't appoint them to go out and fight. They didn't mention a gun, a knife. He appointed them to sing and give praise to the Father and give him all the glory and all the praise for his mercy endureth forever. His mercy was good back then. Jehoshaphat said his mercy is good right now. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to praise God for what he's doing right now in our lives. I'm ready to praise God for what he has done in my life. I'm ready to praise God for all the things he's about to do in my life. I don't know about you, but praise, oh my God. But when you lift up your voice and you praise God, oh, it changes things. If you don't believe me, let Jehoshaphat's story right here tell you. See, for the children in 22, I'm sorry, yes, in 22, and when they began to sing, when they began to sing, and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. See, he said, and when they begin to sing and to praise, not before, not after, but when they begin. See, when you begin to praise God, when those situations are coming up in your life, I'm talking about praising God before you have the victory, praising God before anything looks like it's going to change. I'm talking about praising God in the beginning. It should start, like I said, by waking up, praising God for just waking you up this morning, regardless of what your situation may be, because his will will be done in your life for that day. I'm telling you right now, when you praise God in advance, it quickens them. Think I'm lying? Let me say right here what it says. See, the Lord set an ambush, ambushment against the enemy. Mm, mm, mm. An ambush. See, the people of Judah understood when you send praise up, blessings must come down. When you send praise up, blessings must come down. When you sin, praise up. Hallelujah. Blessings must come down. Whatever it may be in your heart, in your life, when you sin, praise up to the Father. Blessings must come down. See, they never spoke, like I said, about a sword. They never spoke about a gun. They never spoke about a stick even. They just praised. Now watch God. Praise. Now watch him in your life. Praise. Watch the situation turn. Praise and watch you come into a new season. Praise and watch you go into a new land. Praise and get yourself a new vehicle. Praise and get yourself a new job. Praise and get yourself a new mind. Praise and get yourself a new spirit. Praise and get yourself a new walk. Praise and get yourself a new talk. Praise, praise, praise. Hallelujah. Praise. See, some of us sometimes, we can't praise because that, that, that the flesh get in our way. See, the flesh should get directly in our way, so we can't give them the praise. See, we want to handle things ourselves. See, we can't just do the, 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 the walk down. See, we can't know who God is. We can't know what God has done before. We have to get ourselves into it. So, therefore, our mouth has to become our weapon. Therefore, our gun has to become our weapon. Our, our finger point has to become a weapon. Anger has to become a weapon. The fear, it becomes a weapon. The anger becomes a weapon. Hate becomes a weapon. See, these things become a weapon without praise. Praise. Now watch God in your life. Don't wait until the victory to give God the praise. Praise him in advance before the victory with insurance, with the faith of, oh my God, there's a mustard seed with the faith that's been mentioned to all men. Praise him with that little touch of faith that you do have. I don't care how it may feel or how it may look. I said give God some praise. Now watch God. Oh, praise him when the bills ain't paid. Praise them, now watch God. Praise them when the kids act them up. Praise them, now watch God. Praise them when people ain't treating you right. Praise them, now watch God. Praise them, now watch God. So I'm going to tell you something. And uh, since right now we're talking about, well, I just mentioned how people are treating you. Because a lot of our battles are with people. More than anything else, whether it be family, your boss, um, the person at the bank. 
um, your cousin. It may be a, a multitude, but it usually consists of people. So what I want to do is just kind of go back and just let you know something here. See, the people that Jehoshaphat were fighting against. Let me give you a little background on them now since you had a little background on Jehoshaphat. See, the, the Moabites, their original ancestor was Moab, who actually was the child of Lot and his daughter who committed incest with him. That's where they come from. The Edomites were descendants of Esau, who gave up his birthright for soup. So in these two situations, we're dealing with the sexually confused, and we're dealing with the flesh, because he was willing to give up his birthright because he was hungry for some soup. Sometimes in our lives, we have to realize the people that are coming against us have their own issues. And the only way that you can get them right now in your life to go ahead and flee to another direction is to praise. Now watch God, because you can't do anything with individuals that's already been tampered with. See, they already came in a little bit off the rocker. They came in with sexual immorality all the way in their blood, all the way back from generations. They came in with flesh issues all the way back from their generation back Back way back in the day. So if they already have these issues, what makes you think that they don't want to give you one? They don't want to give you one. They want to stop your praise because they want to stop your blessings. They want to stop you from praising God. Thank you for glory. Stop you from glorifying God. Thank you. Thank you. Father, thank you. Keep you in a place along with them. See, that's why they keep coming. That's why the people keep telling you about them. That's why this, that's why that, because these individuals ain't got nothing good but wrath. They want you in the same position they in. But I'm going to tell you something about the God that we serve. Stay on God. Praise. Now watch God. The battle is not yours. We've heard this over and over and over again, but we seem to want to get in God's way all the time. The battle is not yours. All you have to do is sit and be still. Praise God. Trust God. Know who he is. Know exactly what he's done for you. Know that he's going to take you out of this situation like he took you out of the first one. We have to know that we're going to have a season, a season sometimes. Weeping may endure at night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. And the joy that the world can take away is the joy of God that's in your heart that's been placed there. Do not allow anyone to come into what's been placed in you and retake it out of them because they don't know how to activate what it is that's in them to give them the peace. Don't let them steal your peace because they won't have any of their own. You have to live in this peace. The only way to live in this peace is to trust God even in trials and tribulations, even when your knee ain't feeling right, even when the bills ain't paid. I'm talking about even when you ain't got a job. I'm talking about even when everything in the world looks like it's coming down on top of you. We have to trust God. We have to praise him. Now watch him work. And watch him work. We must praise God in the morning time when the sun come up and bless and praise his holy name when the sun go down in the name of Jesus. What I pray today is that someone out there, someone somewhere that don't know about this God, that don't know that he sent his only begotten son for me. Let me tell you about it. See, Jesus, he had the cross. He took the cross, but inside he came and helped him with the cross. He he said, you know what? No, mm -mm, it's okay. Go back over there and just praise. Now watch God, because I'm going to carry this. As he went to the cross for us, he was hung there on the cross for you. He gave it up. The ghost, he said, it is finished. He said, it's okay. I just need you to go praise. Now watch God. He went and he sat in a borrowed tomb for three days. He sat there for three days. He didn't ask nobody to go in there with him. He said, I just need you to go praise. Now watch God. 
On the third day, he rose up in the newness of life, raised up with all power and all might in his hands. And he said, Father, thank you. We are new creatures. All we got to do is praise. Walk in the newness of life. You praise. Now watch God. Keep him in your life. Keep him in your heart. Keep him in your spirit. Keep him in your house. Keep him in your job. Keep him in your car. Keep him with your children. Keep him when you're walking and talking down the street. Keep him in the grocery stores with you. Keep him everywhere you go. Keep him because he's keeping you. He has a covering over your life. He has a calling for your life. He has work for you to do. His will will be done as it is on earth as it is up in heaven, Heavenly Father. I thank you for your will, Heavenly Father, because I know the plans that you have for my life. Your plans are to give me a hope in the future. And you said not to harm me, Heavenly Father, to give me a plan. You got a plan for my life. And your plan for my life does not consist of a whole lot of drama. Your plan for my life consists of prosperity. You told me to live life abundantly. Yes, so I'm going to go to Gucci because you called me. If you created that store for, for them, you created that store for me. You want me to have the finer things in life. And I refuse the devil is a lie that anybody walking down here on God's green earth will be able to steal my joy in him in the name of Jesus the things he's done in our lives we have enough to just glorify him and praise his holy name right now I don't know about you but I know what he's done in my life I know who he is and I glorify his holy name for just being God because I don't care what nobody else say I know is who in control of all things he is the alpha the omega the beginning and the end I don't know nobody that's in the start and the finish of everything that I do every time I wake up in the morning I could conversate with him all throughout the day because he's just that kind of God. He always has a listening ear. I don't care who's not listening, but I know who he is. I know who's sitting up at the throne. And oh my God, I got Jesus Christ sitting at his right hand. It's a scene who stepped in the gap. He loved me so much just to say, you are my child. He called me by name. He said, I chose you. You did not choose me. But I don't know about you or nobody else. I choose God. God. I don't know about the Bears, the Packers, or whoever playing today, but I pick God. I don't know about what's going on with the stimulus package, but I pick God. I don't know when my job go call me back, but I choose God. I don't know exactly what might go on with this e-learning, but I choose God. I don't know about COVID-19, but I choose God. I don't know about any of these things that the world may claim. He put me in this world, but he told me I ain't of it. I'm a citizen of the most high place in the heavenly place places. He said, I'm a citizen. I got a different address. This might be my physical address, but the address that he made for me, oh my God, the mansion that he got for me that's not made by man. I'm going to go and claim it. I'm going to say hallelujah. Praise his name because he's just that good. Woo! Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to feel like I feel all the time. And I want somebody else out there today. Whatever it may be, be a Jehoshaphat. Be a Jehoshaphat. Praise his holy name and now watch God work. God has a plan for you. Whatever situation you may be in, God has a plan for you. Whatever it may be, God has a plan for your life. Whew. For anybody today that has not accepted our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, anyone out there that ain't received him, I challenge you to confess your every sin to him. One time with a sincere heart, he will take you into his bosom and he will renew your spirit in your life. You will be a new man, a new creation, a new creature. Confess, tell him, yes, your son, I believe he went to the cross and he died for me and he rose with newness and that you are God, the creator, the creator of all things. And you want him to come into your heart today. Stamped approval. It is done. I thank you. I thank you. I thank my pastor for another opportunity to preach God's word. I thank God for the church house. I thank God for the 
a whole greater acquaintance, Missionary Baptist Church, for every church door that's open today. I thank God for every individual that's praising and glorifying his holy name right now. I pray that everybody be covered, everybody be changed today, Father God. I pray for peace in our lives, peace in our hearts, Father God. I pray for a newness of life, Father God, a new love, a new family, reconciliation of all areas where there may be any type of destruction, Heavenly Father. I pray that you come into every home, Father, right now that may be struggling with any type of situation, Heavenly Father, and let your, the Prince of Peace come in that surpasses all understanding heavenly father give us the peace from god i thank you i adore you and i love you i thank you for joining us today i pray that this word has touched you and that we can walk through our tribulations a little bit differently remember praise now watch god amen amen and thank god Love you.